Chris, good morning. How's the family, buddy? Thank God uh, everybody is well and doing basically what they should. Uh, thank you for asking, and I hope the same is true for you and yours. Absolutely. You know, it's that passion for your family that I swear to God, I'm a listener. And and I, I sit there, I take in your podcast, I take in your shows, because I feel that you care about those of us on this side of the speaker. Um, look, that's how I was raised, you know? And uh, you're given the blessings of opportunity and reach and power. Use it to help. And I don't get it right all the time. I don't get it right at home. I don't get it right with my family, uh, the family that I choose. Um, what does that mean? I'm talking about the people, you know, when you're an old guy like me, <laughs> I've had people in my life 20, 30 years. Um, they're family to me. And I fall short and I'm flawed and I try to fix and I try to be better. And that's the human condition. And I just think we have to get back to that yep. instead of... You know, because here's what I've learned, okay? When I was sitting in the fetal position for two or three months after I got shit canned at CNN, and I had to kind of like figure out what I was going to do and why I was going to do it, I realized that I was part of a dynamic that was totally different than every other aspect of my life. And I'm very lucky that outside the media, you know, I don't hang out with DC insiders or media stars or Hollywood. You know, that's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of people. Uh, who are big shots, but that's not my bond. My people are tradesmen, they're professionals, they're family people, mostly they're fishermen or they're fighters um, because those are my passions. And we never talk about anything else in our life the way we do about politics. Mm -hmm. Where even if it's the tone, you know, uh, you know, I'm a grown ass man. You know, you don't talk to people about how they're like, you know, uh, you know, a bag of dirt and everything they say is stupid and, you know, they want to destroy everything. You don't talk like that right. to people. And, you know, you, we don't address problems in the rest of our life the way we do in politics. Nobody gets to come to my house and say, uh, yeah, here's why the window leaked. Uh, the other guy sucks worse than I do. <laughs> oh, OK, go ahead. I'll pay you. You know, that doesn't work. Only in politics. So I've decided with this opportunity at News Nation, which really is a different joint. I got to be honest. I don't know if my bosses are going to like this, but it's the only place I've ever worked that is less a media company and more a movement. Yep. You know, like when I asked about like News Nation, like what you know, what, what are you doing with that? The the, uh, the their answer was, well, the News Nation is America. Th this show is about America. It's not about us. And I'd never heard that before. And it is the only name of a media company that does refer to the audience. And I just believe that I've lived enough and I've had enough ups and downs. And they continue, man. I'm still in it. I'm still fighting against my former employer. Um, you know, people perceive that to mean that I'm anti-CNN. No, I love CNN. Mm -hmm. I think it's an amazing organization with great people in it. I just was fired for bad reason. And... I didn't do what they say I did. And I got to fight it because I got to get that off my name. It can't be that it's okay to say Chris Cuomo, comma, who was fired for lying to his bosses. Right. That's not true. And they know it's not true. But it is tough. And I'm the only one playing with their own money. So, you know, it bleeds you out. But that's that's my problem. My my blessing is the opportunity to relate to you and your problems because I have my own. Yep. And the only change I've made in myself is I'm going to make it easier for you guys to get into what concerns you and what scares you and what hurts you by talking about my own experience, especially on the Chris Cuomo project. Yeah, yeah. I know what it's like to fail. I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like uh, to deal with depression. I know what it's like to deal with physical ailments. Um, and I'll talk to you about my experience and what I've learned and the expertise that surrounds um, me and helping myself. And hopefully there are ideas for you in there. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about being judged. <laughs> you get to judge me. <laughs> wow. A town hall with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You know, this guy attacked the media last week. How did you keep your cool? Because, I mean, Chris, come on. You're always that guy that says, Robert, Robert. OK, I, I'm hearing you, but it's my show. Let me say something, then, then you can react. Well, look, um, I've known uh, Bobby a very long time. And uh, I think that I'd probably get beaten up if I interviewed him because my brother was married to his sister for all those years. And they have three beautiful kids. What I love about you, Chris, though, is that you like to talk about the things that are going on in our life. And, I, and that's why I'm so attracted to News Nation as well as your podcast. This town hall on Monday 
is about crime and yes, it is not yes. set on any individual because I don't want to make it about them. I want to make it about you and the problems in the cross section of the country. So Monday night, um, what I'm going to do is a lot of listening and a lot of guiding. Oh. And I'm happy to answer for people's misgivings about the media and their role in hyping crime or not hyping crime, however they feel. I'll take the questions from three major cities. But the best part of the opportunity is it's about talking about what matters most to the most people. Mm -hmm. Crime and its different manifestations, why it's happening and what's being done about it, what's working and what isn't. And even though I'm hyping it as a big deal because it's the first, it's just the beginning. And we're going to be talking about this all the time in different ways as we come up with different creative ways to make it appealing to people. Uh, so it's not going to be one and done. I promise you that. Look at the cities that are that the, the people are running from them, such as Portland, San Francisco, even Los Angeles. I mean, the Carolinas are filling up with people from all over this nation because they think we are we are that place. No, we've got crime here, too. That's why this is so important. Everywhere has crime. Um, it's about how it's perceived, right? Perception is often reality in life and certainly in politics. And what's being done about it? I think what people want every bit as much as results is effort. Yep. And I think what they perceive is uh, that there are problems that are being trafficked in rather than fought. And that's frightening. And it's again, you know, like Jordan Peterson says, you got to be careful about single single factor explanations to complex problems. And uh, why are people going to the Carolinas? Oh, well, other than storm season, you know, you got weather, yep. uh, you've got growing commerce, you've got tacky right or wrong in their judgment. But there are a lot of people, there are a lot more people who stay where they are. And our job uh, in my position and my capacity is to create conversation about what matters where you are. And a town hall is just an excellent way to do it as long as you don't allow it to go off the rails. And you know, that's why I'm there. Wow. Well, congratulations on what you're doing with this. And I cannot wait to share this with the listeners and to help grow forward. I love your podcast, dude. You got to come back anytime to this show. Hey, I'm a call away. You <laughs> want me? I'm easy to. All right, man. Will you be brilliant today? Okay, Chris? Thank you very much. You take care of yourself, and I appreciate the opportunity.